Hi everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venetia. This is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast and today I am joining you for episode 16. Before we get started, I'll do a bit of admin. Uh, there's been a very few new amount of people on the channel, so I'll reintroduce myself and then tell you what this episode is going to look like. So as I said, my name is Venetia. I'm originally from Belgium, the French speaking part in the south, but I live in Scotland, just outside of Edinburgh with my partner. And I have been doing this podcast for about nine months now, and we've just reached 5,000 subscribers, which I am so eternally grateful for. And like, I had a little happy dance when it happened. And to celebrate that, we're going to be doing a knit night in a few weeks. But I'll give the details on that at the end of the episode. So stick around if you want to know more. I just want to take like one minute to really, really thank you guys for getting to that point for any kind of share that you've done or comment or like and it's kept me going. Uh, nothing I can say will sound not cliche so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to follow me on social media you can find me on Ravelry or on Instagram at the Woolly Worker, same as here on YouTube and if you want you can also find me on Ko-fi or Ko-fi uh, at the Woolly Worker if you wanted to support the channel by um, contributing any amount that you're comfortable with uh, just to show I guess appreciation in a different way that's always obviously appreciated and thank you to everyone who's already uh, donated a bit of money or tipped me for the videos it really means a lot and it has been reinvested in the channel um, I'm gonna be buying a new tripod for my phone which hopefully will help me make the videos a bit more easily because it's always a struggle to set this up <laughs> which is why it always changes like slightly my background or the angle as always if you're new here uh, i keep a very detailed description box below on youtube with links to everything that i mention and designer names pattern names color names and other podcasters or shops that i mention in case you wanted to check these out and i also have timestamps or chapters so you can navigate through the video easily if you want to skip ahead to some sections or come back to them when you come back to watch the video later on. It has been a bit of a while since I filmed the last podcast episode. I don't really know why. Well, I was going to film last weekend, but then I went to the Scottish Yarn Festival and then I was just absolutely shattered that weekend, so I didn't really want to film. But I have put a couple of videos since my latest podcast, like my autumn plan. So you've been kept up to date on my thoughts, but uh, I haven't shown you my project. So we've got a fair amount of finished objects. I've got two garments and two accessories. No, three accessories. And then we will talk about works in progress, which I am desperately trying to finish because I really want to get a move on on my autumn plans. If you haven't seen that video, then you can check that out because I, I go into much more depth about what's planned. And I'm very specific, so there will be no surprises when you watch me over the next three months. Oh, and then one last bit before we get into the podcast I obviously have gotten a haircut if you haven't noticed and yeah I just got that yesterday so it's still a bit like styled how their hairstylist styled it and not necessarily how I would style it so if I keep touching my hair during the episode I am so sorry but also if you've ever gotten a haircut which I'm sure you have then you understand the feeling of um brand new hair and uh yeah I, I hope you like it I, I like it I think it suits me and it reflects my personality quite well, so I'm really happy with it. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So the first finished item is also what I am wearing today, and it is the Northwood V-neck sweater by Jessie Maid, or from Jessie Maid Designs, and it's a drop shoulder V-neck DK weight kind of cropped sweater, and I'll be showing photos and videos and b-roll as I speak about that as always because it's just easier to show um, than me trying to cram some angles here but I've made this entirely from stash yarns which I'm very proud of I talked about this in my previous episode the kind of color choice and thoughts behind it but I'll quickly go through the colors so this is raw work sport but it's a very thick woolen spun yarn so it kind of has the same gauge as a DK uh, this is the sport color and it's dyed um, I can't remember the color name, but it'll be on my Ravelry. Then this is Knitting for Olive Merino in Olive, or Dusty Olive, held double. Then this is the Kami yarn in their um, non-superwash Merino DK, uh, which I also can't remember the name, but it's on my Ravelry. Then this is, again, Raw Work Sport, but this is Undyed, and it's the color Sand, I believe. And then this is... Um, 
BC Garn Biobalance in the color Moss or number six. And then this is Woolly Knit uh, Merino Cones Held Double in the colorway uh, Cosecha Gold. Uh, and then we just go back to those colors. So yeah, the, that's, that's all the colors. And as you can see, yeah, uh, I don't know. I still am not like 100% happy with my color choices. I, I think the contrast is not the best at this part. Uh, maybe I should have put the green, like the bright green stripe a bit more in the middle as opposed to so high up. Like maybe I should have switched those colors around. But it, it just, I didn't feel that strongly about it that I wanted to rip back the work that I did. Um, I had played around on Photoshop beforehand where I was playing around with like the color samples to, to see uh, what would look good. And someone told me that I could have saved myself a lot of time if I had done a different technique, which is like you wrap some strands of yarn on like a cardboard or something in the order of the stripes that you want um, and like in the ratios that you want so that can help you visualize what the colors are going to look like in sequence in sequence better than if they're in the sky. So next time that I want to make stripes I'll do that. The sweater I did it on four millimeter needles instead of 4.5 so my gauge was off and therefore I did a size medium to get me the measurements of a size small and as I was doing it it felt quite small still especially the sleeves when I finished the sleeves just before the ribbing I measured them and they like I was a full stripe away from what it needed to be and I thought well, what do I do? Like, how do I change that? I'm not gonna add an extra color because it's not even like my stripes are in a sequence. Like the green comes back and a dark green comes back, but like in reverse order. So I really don't know what I could have put. I didn't want to put anything between the olive and the dark green. So I was a bit bummed. And then what I ended up doing is blocking it beforehand. And then I realized that I was able to really get more length and stretch. So I just did the ribbing as normal without adding any extra length and just blocking alone helped. Not only, I guess, to add length to the sleeve, but also to drop the shoulder more, which meant that I needed to knit less sleeve. And you had the schematics provided in the pattern with lots of measurements and numbers. So you knew that you could really block it to the shape that the designer wanted you to, which is really, really helpful. It was a really, really easy pattern, really straightforward, really bitsy because of all the stripes that you had to do. The stripes uh, instructions were really nice from Jessie Made. I appreciated that. And I definitely 100% want to make another one of these because the sh I love the shape. So even though I'm not like usually fond of the colors I ended up picking, I don't hate them. I'm just not like a huge fan of them, but I love the shape. I really like a v-neck. Um, I'm wearing like a very deep scoop, like neck black thing under because like I said, this is a different gauge. Oop. The raw work is a different gauge, so sometimes you can see a little bit of holes in this, uh, especially because it gets stretched over your shoulder. So next time, make sure that if you're like using a yarn here at the top of the shoulder, um, get a thick one. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, uh, all the yarns are next to skin soft, I would say, even if that one is a little bit more rustic. At first, I, again, was regretting my choice of using the dark green here because it's the mo more rustic one as opposed to like the knitting for olive merino. And I thought, oh, this is going to be touching my bare skin, but it's fine. Um, however, one of the yarns I chose, this one, BC Garn, is cotton merino. And that one, for example, was wet for much longer because of the cotton content that takes more time to dry. And even when you feel it, it just feels different. Um, and like the hand dyed feels quite different as well. I don't know, it's not the best experience sensory wise to have so many different textures, but it doesn't bother me. I guess it's more mentally. I know that they're all different fiber contents, thicknesses, and I was, my aim, my primary aim was to get everything from stash and that was accomplished. So I'm not going to be too hard on myself, but next time if I make this sweater again, or when I make this sweater again, I'll 100% make sure to use much, sim much more similar yarns and also to either think the colors better, although I don't think I could have spent more time thinking the colors out before this one, or just copy someone else's color scheme from Ravelry or Instagram. The v-neck was very funny before being knitted up because like it's so plunging and so deep 
and when you try it on it's like there's nothing covering you but then when you add the v-neck it really pulls in everything together i did all my bind offs by the way it's two by two rib i just knitted it i just did a knit bind off and it gives this really nice like straight line which i'm usually a diehard tubular bind off fan but i feel like I quite like how straight that line is as opposed to if it was like round and folding inwards maybe it would have been a bit too bulky so I'm really happy with how clean that line is so I highly recommend this pattern I think it was a lot of fun and it was quite fast and rewarding and enjoyable and I really wouldn't change anything apart from my yarn choice in the next iteration of this sweater so I'm really really happy with it and it's cropped but not too much so I can wear it with high-waisted bottoms but like I don't need to necessarily and I think it's gonna keep me nice and warm and I'll obviously have little like cowls and scarves if I'm wearing this out in winter to protect this chest area. Um, the total price of this item I will put down below. It was a bit of a hassle calculating because the way that I calculate the cost of my projects is I do it like by the gram or by the meter. So I'm very precise about it because I can use leftovers afterwards. And so I calculate the cost of those leftovers as well. So I don't round up basically is what I'm saying. So I calculated the number of grams and the price of each ball. And because I had received this Merino uh, for free from a viewer, Erica, and because um, I think there was a problem with my scale when measuring the gold, the total cost seems lower than what it should have been had I paid for this uh, knitting for olive. So here's what it cost. and. Also, I put all the yarn like usage, the grams I've used, I've put that all on my Ravelry project. And this is an excellent project for leftovers. But again, word of caution, if you are using leftovers, make sure that the yarns are really matching and your swatch will tell you if they are. And my swatch did tell me that some of them were different and weird and I should have listened. I am getting quite warm, so I might take this off at some point before the end of the video. So the next finished object is another garment and it's the cardigan number no. seven by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And that was a project that could have been faster because it was on big needles, it was a big yarn, but I don't know, I just never, like, it was nice to work in the background uh, while I was doing other projects. It was a little boring to work on, but I do really, really enjoy the finished item. So I'll show you here on camera. I don't know if it's all in the frame, but yeah, here it is. Um, there's a little end at the bottom. I'm very sorry. Usually I'm very good at weaving in the ends before showing it on the podcast. It's a bit of my pet peeve when um, people show unfinished items because there's still like finishing touches to be done. Um, but those are like the buttons strands because I, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep those ones. But I am sure now, so I will weave them in. <laughs> anyway, I really like this cardigan. I think... It's just so simple and basic and a project that I would have done as a beginner like a couple of years ago and I, it felt kind of weird for me to be doing it now as like an advanced or intermediate knitter anyway uh, but I don't regret it and I have worn this a lot already although not as much as I would like to because it's still quite warm here in Scotland for some reason. But um, yeah, I, I've talked about this in the previous episode, so I don't think I'll go into too much detail because I was pretty close to being done, if I remember correctly. The yarn that I've used is Drops Air in grey and then uh, Camaro's Midnight Soul in grey as well. And again, the actual color names will be put down below. It was my first time trying Midnight Soul and it was a gift from my mom for my birthday, the Midnight Soul, which again is why the total cost of this project, which I will put here, Sorry, I'm all over the place today. This is why the cost is really not high because I didn't pay for the Midnight Soul. But it's not an outrageously expensive second strand. If you're willing to pay for mohair, then you should be willing to pay for Midnight Soul. And I find it much easier on the skin than mohair actually is. It is still a little bit like prickly, but it's not itchy is what I would say. So it's not like alpaca soft but I don't think that the strands are as like spiky in my skin. I'm pretty happy with the color match. It gives a bit of a mottled effect. I think the drops air is lighter and then the midnight sole is ever so slightly darker. Um, I modded this pattern by adding some short rows here at the back. I don't know if, I guess you can see that, 
when the cardigan is uh, buttoned. And then I've also added some short rows at the back hem, uh, which you, you can't really see actually, but maybe you'll see it in the photos that I'll post. And that was just to improve the fit because I knew that this was a beginner pattern that wouldn't have any shaping basically. Um, I also added a few decreases on the sleeves, just I think three sets of decreases on each sleeve at regular intervals, just to taper it ever so slightly. And then you get like the balloon sleeve that my favorite things knitwear has you do, which I quite like. Uh, really happy with the sleeve length. This didn't grow too, too much in the wash, but I was careful not to stretch it to the high heavens. The buttons are some gray turtle shell. Don't know if you're going to be able to see. Um, I'm quite happy with the way that I did them. I used this trick again from, I think it was Petite Net has a support video where Kimi demonstrates wrapping the yarn around the button before securing it, which raises the button. As you can see, the buttons there's quite a bit of empty space between the button and the cardigan. And this is to accommodate for when you are putting it through the buttonhole and then that empty space gets filled with the button band from the opposite side, if that makes sense. So it doesn't get all stretched and distorted. And it lays flat. And I'm really happy with that. Happy with the placement of the buttons as well. It's a bit of my pet peeve when they're uneven, but I would say that this is a pretty good distribution of them. The only thing I'm not happy with is the tubular bind off that I did. I didn't do the tubular, I did the Italian one. And I think it's a bit messy. And because the yarn is quite chunky as well, it just doesn't look as polished as I like some of my other finishings to be, especially at areas like corners. I think this is quite messy and I'm not thrilled about it but I feel like it kind of goes with the look of this cardigan which is like a chunky hand knit cardigan as opposed to like high-end fashion. I also added a faux seam on the side which you may see from the photos. I doubt you're going to be able to see it much here but it's basically just at the underarm here. You really can't see it much. And I explained how I did that in a previous video and it just, I wanted it to add a bit of structural integrity and honestly, you really can't tell that anything happened. I guess it folds nicely when you fold it because it's like, it's like a folding line. But apart from that, I don't, I don't know. It wasn't hard or anything, so I might do it again. It just, I don't feel like it added anything. Um, so yeah, the number one thing about this card again is that I just adore the fit. I love the length, I love the sleeves, I love the neckline, like everything about it is on point. So I will keep those as good measurements and as templates for when I want to make other cardigans or sweaters to hit me at those levels. Like I want to keep the measurements in mind. The thing that I'm not enthralled about with this project is the yarn or the gauge more specifically. I'm happy with my yarn. It's just a bit too flimsy and shapeless. It's not heavy, which is good. It's just not as clean as I like my other sweaters to be. But it's it's a gap in the wardrobe. I didn't have any cardigan like that. And you know, I hate making cardigans or like I don't hate them. I like having them, but I don't enjoy making them as much as I enjoy making sweaters. So this was a good way to lure me into making a cardigan for myself because the gauge was so big and therefore it was quite fast to do. I have three balls of drops left over, which is a shame because I was trying to get rid of my stash because I had that drops for ages. And so with the three balls left over of drops, I'll just show you quickly what I'm doing. I'm doing a Sophie shawl with the drops. And as you can see, I've done quite a lot. Uh, I've, I'm just at the point where I'm starting to decrease now. I've done all my increases and I've done a straight section in the middle. And I'm doing this pattern because I had seen someone use drops for it and they had approximately the same quantity that I did. And I just, like, that was the only way I could see myself using those leftovers. Otherwise, I would have just donated the yarn because I didn't want to do another type of accessory and I didn't want to stripe anything. So this is just literally, like, the best economical way of using the leftovers because you can just knit until the halfway point and then start decreasing when you've reached half of your quantity of yarn left over. 
And I would recommend Drops for this project. It's really squishy and it goes well with the garter aspect of it. Uh, I'm sure it's going to grow significantly as well. And because the Drops is kind of like mottled itself anyway, like this gray color is not unified. It gives the scarf a bit more interest and depth as well. But this is really a non-eventful project, so I won't say more about it. It's really just like a utilitarian, I need to get rid of those three balls of drops, so I'm making a Sophie Shaw type of project. Ooh, I really feel a bit all over the place, but I'm also going to take off this jumper because I am roasting. Okay, we are back, and this is the Home Camisole by Kadri, which I feel a bit more <laughs> comfortable in right now, so that's good. Uh, summer is still not over, apparently. But yeah, that was uh, cardigan number seven, and then I guess my work in progress of my Sophie shawl. I hope that this video isn't too disjointed. I feel like because it's been a while since I've podcasted, I'm a little bit out of practice, and also because there has been a lot since the last episode, I really want to get through all the items and give you the amount of details that I had planned but I don't want to rush through but I don't want the video to be three hours long so yeah bear with me if you want to know how I've done the short rows modification on the cardigan then you can check my Ravelry notes where I've described in more detail the stitch counts that I followed for a size small and my conclusion from this pattern is that I would definitely buy the midnight sole again in fact, I've just bought some on sale in a sort of like mossy, earthy green color for like an olive sweater that I want to do later down the line because I think it's going to be an excellent alternative to mohair, which I've decided not to buy anymore. I will use the one that I have, but I won't purchase any more mohair. Okay, so let's get on to the accessories that I've made quite quickly because they're not as, good, as interesting as the works in progress that I want to talk about. So firstly, we've got the Minerva Socks by Sari Nordland. And this is a pair that I started back in July. I finished the first sock in a couple of weeks and it just took me way too long to finish the second one. So here they are. I really don't think I'm gonna say more about this because I talked about everything when I finished the first sock and there's nothing new since the second. I had cast it on at a toe because they're a uh, toe up, thinking that this would help me relieve the second sock syndrome because I had already cast it on, but then I didn't. But then what helped me was to kind of tell myself to do a certain amount of rounds every day and that seemed to do the trick because I had like a minimum amount of rounds I needed to do and every day I would end up just doing more so then I finished them faster than I thought. The way that I finished these up at the top was with um, Judy surprisingly, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off which I think worked really well to give this like neat straight edge that doesn't flare out and yet is very stretchy. I'm doing it on the other one. So there's really no problem at all with the fit of these. I was just not a huge fan of the pattern, like the design, the, not how it was written, but how it looked. I wasn't like a huge fan and I probably wouldn't have purchased that if it wasn't part of a knit along. And also wasn't a big fan of the yarn because this is not my color. I don't really like bubblegum pink, but I had this yarn in stash. It's West Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4 Ply, which I've used their self-striping before because I loved the self-striping aspect of it. But as a uni color, I think you really realize what the yarn actually is and it is quite, it almost feels squeaky. So I don't know, it, it made me fall a bit out of love from the West Yorkshire Spinner. Um, definitely not as soft and luxurious as the Regia 4 Ply Silk and Yak that I used for the previous two pairs. Um, which I'll show photo photos of here. So it really highlights the difference in texture. But it's an affordable yarn. Here's the cost of, like, here's the, the price of that project then while I'm talking about that. Very affordable. And they're quite hard wearing, like, or like they're good. They don't felt or create holes. And the stitch definition is not bad. As you can see, um, the motif are like little tulips. You've got some twisted stitches here. Um, it's not bad and it does highlight what the pattern is, but I just wasn't a fan of this project for both like yarn reasons and pattern reasons, which is why they stayed on the needles for so long. But now that I finished these, I finally cast on the fourth and last pair of Sari's Sock Cal, and I will talk about these now while I'm at it, so then I can stop talking about socks. And 
this pair is using leftovers from the first three pairs, but I'm at a point now where I've just realized I'm probably going to run out of one of them if I don't do any modifications, which is a bit of a bummer, and it's having me be very careful and calculate and everything. So again, it's not an easy, mindless project because I'm running against the clock. <laughs> not only against the clock, but against uh, quantities too. This sock is joined to a lot of yarn, but I will try and show you anyway. Here's... Oh, that looks cute, doesn't it? That looks quite good on camera. So, um, I used the red then as my main color and then those little like accents here. They're lace. This is a different lace pattern than this one, even though they look quite similar, they're actually different. Then you continue the lace at the top of the foot and then the sole is just like stockinette. Uh, the heel is a German short row heel, which I'm not super happy with. It does seem to leave some holes. In retrospect, I probably should have done the fish lip kiss heel, which I have done before and prefer. This is really not nice. This is quite sloppy. So when they're on the foot, it doesn't look like that as much, but I don't trust these to be good at staying intact. <laughs> um... Also something that I've noticed by wearing the pair of socks I've made that I finished in the last episode, the Midsummer, mm, the Summer Girl socks, which I made in this red. This is made with Regia 4-ply yak and merino, and the yak fibers pill intensely, and they pill brown, so it looks like you have like dark, long hair like tufts coming out of it, which is very off-putting. I'll spare you and I won't show you the photos, but it's quite gross in a way. Like it just makes me feel like I'm stepping on hair and I keep on pulling them out and I've washed them and I don't have a shaver or anything. So I've not done that. I've just kept on pulling the fibers out. And if you check the Ravelry comments on that yarn, people complain about it in every single comment. People say that, um, yeah, they really regret that and then they won't purchase it again, which is a shame because I love how this yarn feels, the red, I love it, but it pills horribly and it wears horribly and the whole point of knitting is to create clothes that we're gonna wear and I'm gonna wear those socks, but I'm not gonna buy this yarn again because I don't like how it wears, which is a shame, but I thought I'd be honest with you and update you on that because with knitting podcasts, you usually only hear about the projects as they're done, but not after they're, they've been worn a few times. So yeah, let me know if you've had that same experience with Yak fibers, or if it was just that Regia brand. So I've got one more stripe to do here in pink, and then I will do the toe. Normally the toe I would be doing in the red, but I'm going to run out. So I'm going to do the toe then in the beige. So I'll have one stripe of pink, and then I'll do the toe in beige. I just hope I have enough yarn to make that last little um, separation in red, but we'll see. Uh, worst case scenario, I will make the other sock, I will make it slightly like shorter at the rib or shorter here in the middle. My only problem with this pattern as well, it's really well written and the charts are really good, but the problem is that you start it cuff down, you know, you start here, you do that, then it tells you knit in stockinette until you reach this length, then you do the heel, then it says after the heel, Knit until you are 14 centimeters away from the tip of the, like from the length you want. And I feel like 14 centimeters is a huge amount to ask someone to like estimate when they're almost there. Because if I try the sock on, the, if I, if I try this on, like 14 centimeters from the top or from the bottom is different because the f bottom of my foot is flat and then the top of my foot is arched, so they're different lengths. And then if I don't even wear it, if, if I'm measuring it from uh, just it not being worn, then I also get a different measurement for 14 centimeters. So basically I had no idea when to start doing those stripes here uh, at the, on the foot. And I just thought if I estimated it wrong, I will adapt and adjust the toe accordingly by making it longer or shorter, but I found it was quite difficult to, to know when to start those. Um, if you look at the pattern, you'll understand what I mean with, like, you have to knit a little bit before you do those stripes. But yeah, not, not much else to say about that. Again, I'm just doing these because I need to finish them for the knit along. It finishes in a couple of weeks 
And my verdict on this knit along that lasted for four months is that I enjoyed the challenging aspect. Like I like having goals. I like having like tasks and to-do lists and everything, but it did kill my sock mojo a little bit. I felt I couldn't do other socks. And because I wasn't a fan of the second pattern, that's when I should have taken it as a sign to just like stop there and not do the rest of the knit along. So I think what I'll do next year is I won't participate as it's happening. And then once I have seen all four pairs, I'll see if I want to do my own knit along, <laughs> you know, from October onwards, as opposed to from June onwards. Uh, but I'm happy I, I tried that because I always see knit alongs and I get like mystery knit alongs and I get FOMO. But now I realize that they're just not for me. Okay, the next item is a pair of penny gloves by Petite Knit. Um, I have made this pattern before, like last month or, or two months ago, I think it was last month, with Leftover Drops Flora. And then this time I did it with Leftover Kinross 4 Ply in the color Granite, which was leftover from my Daily Pullover by Paula Pereira. You've heard about this yarn multiple times before. It is extremely soft once you wash it. It feels like cashmere, but it's not. It's 100% lamb's wool. And as you can see, like the, the drape is really nice. They're really nice and even. They're blocked. Like this is what blocking can achieve. Um, I've actually not bought the pattern. I've made my own version because I am using a different gauge anyway. So this is fingering weight yarn and I prefer it anyway because I, I like it to be more delicate on my fingers, you know, it just feels more dainty. And um, I had created my own pattern for the previous version and I thought that maybe they were a bit snug. So I added two stitches to the stitch count for these and I thought that they were a bit too loose now. So I think I'd, I'm just gonna go back to my original stitch counts because I really prefer a snug, tight fit, especially at the wrist area. I'll show you. So here they are. I think they're stunning. They make me feel very elegant. What I'm talking about is this area here. It's There's just extra fabric, which makes sense because obviously your wrist is going to be smaller than your arm or your hand, especially like at the bone area. Maybe I'll do some decreases here next time or work this centimeter on smaller needles. I made these on 2.5 millimeter needles, by the way. Um, I'm really happy with my thumb pickup. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. I did it using the same trick that you do when you pick up for underarm stitches for sweaters, where you pick up two extra stitches here, pick up two extra stitches here, and then on the next round you decrease them. I'm really happy with that. It absolutely hole free, very tight, very snug. Uh, there's movement for these fingers to open up. It's extremely soft, as I um, said, and as it is like known to be Kinross. I cast on pearl wise to get this nice little like clean bump line. And uh, as far as I know, I've made this smaller than the original pattern, but it really is adjustable. I've tried to calculate a yardage amount that was required to really make the use of my leftover. So I've got nothing left of the Kinross, which is great. I have one more version of these that I want to do with Cardiff Cashmere. I have one ball of the Cardiff Cashmere, um, so I'm going to try and use the most of that. And then I've got one more version that I want to do with two strands of Phil Colena Alva held together in black. So yeah, you're going to see more of these in the future, like in the next few weeks or months. I had started doing these two at a time because I thought it'd be much faster. And boy, I was wrong. This is so funny because everybody like raves about two at a time technique to avoid second item syndrome. And it really slowed me down. And I dreaded picking this up because it was quite messy. I was doing it with like the, the strands of yarn were coming from the same bubble, like ball of yarn. And it was just kind of always getting twisted and everything. So then after a week or two of having these on the needles, I was just like, you know what? Even though it took you ages to set up two at a time, go and undo the two at a time setup put them back on two different needles and then finish it. And then I finished them that day of like nonstop knitting. And I was like, wow. So it turns out the answer was there all along. Just remove that obstacle that you put in your own way. But yeah, this is what I was saying earlier with how I don't like my cardigan number seven huge gauge and huge stitches compared to this fabric. I mean, look at that. That looks store bought, doesn't it? Like, it's so neat and it makes me feel like a good knitter, like 
because the stitches are so even and tiny, as opposed to the cardigan number seven, which makes me look like a sloppy knitter. So yeah, sometimes it is the tool, not the artist. Okay, the next and final accessory and finished object is an Oslo hat by Petite Knit. Um, I had said, actually, this was my first, this is my first finished item from my autumn plans um, from the video I just posted. And this is the hat. I made it in a sunless garn double sundae in the color Into the Woods, which is a beautiful, oh, I'm kind of blown out. Which is a beautiful dusty olive color. It's so stunning. In real life, it's a little, like it's, it really is a mix of brown and green. So the Oslo hat is a triple folded brim where um, you cast on here, knit all the way, knit all the way, fold it, knit it with the cast on edge, you do a bit of a reverse tucking it thing, and then you do a bit of length, and then you do decreases. That's pretty much the construction of the hat. Um, there's a German short row turn at one point, which helps you do this hat entirely in like the knit stitch. There's no purling involved, which is nice. Uh, for the decreases, I tried something special where, you know when you have like your knit two together, the other one is a slip slip knit, and some people have suggested that to make the slip slip knit neater, on the next round, you knit that one through the back loop to make it lie flat. And maybe this would work on sleeves of sweaters, but here, because the decreases are all stacked on top of each other, I think it left a very visible line. So this is my knit two togethers, and then this is my slip slip knits. And as you can see, there's something happening here that is not invisible. But it happened on all four sides. So it's not like, it's a design feature. It's not a mistake, let's just say that. Um, this is my second Oslo hat. I made the first one. It got lost in the post when I sent it to my dad, which is a shame and you can hear about it um, in my other videos. But I'm, I've, I've, um, I've moved on, we, we've accepted that. And so this is my second time making the pattern. It's really fast, really easy. I wrote the pattern out like on my phones in my notes so I can just like, do it on the go. I don't even need like the PDF anymore. Um, I already said before that my suggestions would be to do a provisional cast on instead of picking up the stitches afterwards. And also the, the decreases are badly written in the pattern. She omitted one of the decreases in the repeat. But if you're an experienced knitter, your brain might just fill out the gap without you realizing and you, you might not realize that there's something missing from the line. Um, but I wrote out the instruction and my Ravelry notes that um, includes that missing instruction. And yeah, I think I think I prefer the muscle bra hat on me. I think the, the petite knit, this time I, I actually I removed some length from this and I removed some length from this because I wanted to see if I could only use two balls of Sunless Garden Double Sunday, but I ended up having to crack into the third ball. So I still haven't perfected the recipe to a point where I can just minimize yardage because I want to be able to do this with only one skein of hand dyed yarn, which usually runs 212 meters. I think this used a bit more than that. So I'm still trying to refine that. But I, I think I prefer the muscle bra hat, even though this one has a more fancy construction with the whole double fold and reverse socket net. I feel like it just doesn't stay up as nicely. Like it has a tendency, I wish I had a more crisp folding line so that the brim would stay in place. And I'll show you what I mean. So this is what it looks like on, and I like mine to be quite snug at the top. I don't love the hipster look. And what I mean is that technically you could make the brim lower or you could make the, the brim higher. Like, I don't know. There's something about the brim that just makes me unsure of where's the right place to fold the brim at. Um, and also it's hard to take pictures of this lying flat. But yeah, this is gonna be a really nice hat. I think it looks good with my short hair now. Like this is, this is a great outfit for winter and I'm really happy I have this. And I'd absolutely buy this color again to make a whole sweater out of that. I'm obsessed with it. It's one of the petite knit colorways and yeah, they're amazing. I used 3.5 millimeter needles for this, which I think is what the pattern recommends, but I probably could get away with maybe 325 to make the stitches even 
smaller and make the fabric a bit denser. I don't think there's a risk of this becoming too dense because as you can see, like it is quite floppy. Um, I think I'd, I would like it to have a little bit more shape. As you can see, the brim here flopping out. Don't know. There's just something about it that I'm not a huge fan of and I think it's, it's related to the brim. But overall, happy to have this pattern. I made the size medium, by the way, and I think people usually recommend sizing down in hats as opposed to sizing up if you're unsure about your size, because it's kind of always better to have more negative ease, especially if you're going to block it. So here's the total cost of this Oslo hat pattern. And the last thing that I'll say about that is that I've already cast on another one, which is for my dad as a replacement for the one that got lost in the post. So uh, I'm using Filklana Arweta held double in the color charcoal. It's gonna be like an exact replica of my first one. So I'll just show you where I'm at, which is not much. I've just cast it on and did like five rounds. And this is my on the go project on the train, little project bag. And I'm actually doing a mini cal for that uh, on Instagram. So if you are wanting to do an Oslo hat or you've always planned to do one, then join me, message me on Instagram. We have a little group chat where we, um, talk to each other about color choices, modifications, and just encourage each other to keep going. And it's very low key. The only rules is that you cast it on in September and finish it in October. So yeah, just DM me if you want to be added to that. I said in my autumn plans videos that I wanted to do projects at the same time as other people. So uh, I will be asking you guys on here and also on Instagram if you want to join group chats when I cast on projects so we can do them together. So keep an eye on that. Um, it's kind of hard to keep track of what I've said to whom and when. So I'm really sorry if I miss your message or um, if one of the if one of the little mini knit alongs doesn't happen. But um, I guess the next ones that are going to happen are the Legs Pullover by Ozetta. I'm going to cast that on real soon. And then the Lana Vest by Irene Lynn. So yeah, anyway, I think that's all for finished objects. I hope that you enjoy that. Um, it, it has been a while, so I really want to make sure next time I don't leave four weeks between podcasts. Otherwise, it's just too complicated. So the next thing I will show you is the works in progress. And the very first one is a test knit I am doing for the Crea Bea, Rebecca Klo. I am doing the Alder sweater. I fell in love with it when she first showed like the swatch on her channel, when she showed her samples. She had started one in like a gray and oatmeal, like a brown and oatmeal color. Then she ripped that out and started it over in like a pink and red colorway. But I really liked her neutral one. And I just thought, 100% I'm gonna make that in the autumn when she releases it. Then she did a test call, I applied, and to my surprise, I was picked. I had applied to almost all of her test nets and was never picked, so this really came as a surprise. And I've showed it in the last episode, I had done like pretty much... I think I had... You start off as like a wedge that you do flat, then you join in the round and you knit a little bit with the raglan increases. And I think I had done that and I had blocked it to see if I was still on gauge. And I have done a fair amount of progress since, which obviously I have had to because it's a test knit. So let me show you without further ado. Oh yes, we are growing. It's taking quite a while to grow, but I have been working on this quite intensely for the last few days, especially because I really want to get the body down done so I can start doing the sleeves because I'm, I'm a bit worried about like if they're going to be a bit more complicated because there's decreases to be done and the pickup at the underarm uh, to make it look all nice. But yeah, I, I've picked up and done the neck, which is really chunky and like meaty. Like I really like that kind of neck. It's a little tight when I put it over my head, but then it sits really nice and high, which I like. It's looking small, but I'm going to block it out a lot. The, pa the stitch pattern I find is quite like it restrictive and tight. So I really want to open this up and make sure that it's a bit more drapey because it feels quite substantial right now. Uh, the yarns I am using is Retrosaria Vovo for that green color and then uh, Raw Work Sport in the color Sand, which is the same yarn from that Northwood V-neck that I've just shown. And I'm fairly certain that this is what I've got left of my first ball of white. So can you imagine, I've, I've, I'm going to be able to finish the entire body of this sweater with 100 grams of this, 
which makes this a very economical project for your contrasting color for sure. Both of those yarns are sport, but I'm usually a loose knitter, so that's good. I'm doing the size 3, I believe. And I would say that the pattern has been really well written and understandable so far. It's not a joy to work on for me personally, because at this point I'm finding it quite tedious that there is something to do in every single round and it's not like, it's mindless in the sense that I know the stitch pattern and I don't have to look at it at all. But I just wish I could, but I have to look at it. I wish I could just do like Netflix and everything, but I, I, I have to have my eyes on it at all times. Um, but the texture is really unique and I've not had that in other patterns. And I, I really like the look of all over textured sweaters. I just don't like the work that has to be put into the all over <laughs> textures. It's a little stitch marker that I got from Rebecca at the Scottish Yarn Festival. She made these herself. How cute. So, uh, a, a few more centimeters, then the ribbing in green, and then I'll pick up for the sleeves. And the deadline is in two weeks, I believe. And then there might be something very exciting and special happening after that, which I'll share more about when I can. But yeah, here's a little teaser. I like the raglan increase. It's very clean. I posted a photo of this. I posted a photo of this on my Instagram when it was a work in progress and you guys loved it. Um, so thank you <laughs> for all the, the nice things you've said about my like color choice. But yeah, I'll stop carrying this now because like you get the gist, but this is my Alder sweater test knit and it's so unique. <laughs> I'm really excited to have the finished item. I just need to put the work into it that it deserves. The next project I've also shown before and I've done a fair amount of progress on, but I had to stop because I had to focus my efforts on the test knit. And it's my Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Made Design. I'm doing this with the Kami yarn, the Alpaca Silk Cashmere base, which is heavenly and very luxurious. A little slippy, slippery to work on and I'm finding it hard to like, I have to keep, I have to keep the project low on my legs, like when on my lap, because if I'm having it up, the weight of it brings it down, it's, it's weird. So yeah, it's a little uncomfortable to work on sometimes because of the alpaca silk cashmere. Um, the sweater is a fingering weight sweater, which is taking a while. I cast this on two months ago now. Uh, and I wish I was working on it more, but I, I have other more urging deadlines, which is why this is not done yet. But I have finished the sleeves, which you will be proud of me because in the last episode, I wasn't sure if I, if I had it in me to cut the yarn from the sweater. But yeah, here we are. I'll show you. Ta-da! So I've done both sleeves. And it's so, so, so nice, so soft. I love it. The sleeves are quite short because I am playing yarn chicken. I only bought two kinds of hand-dyed yarn because I'm on a budget, I guess. And uh, I really want to be able to squeeze out as much of a project as possible without needing to get an extra kind of hand-dyed, just in case. Um, the sleeves are then a little like bracelet length, I would say. And I've tried it on and I am comfortable with that fit. It's just if I'm able to get more length by stretching it out during blocking, that'll be very nice. And if not, then they will stay on their shorter side, but not to a point where it's like a mistake or odd. Uh, the modification that I did for the sleeves is that I added one more round between the decreases. Uh, because I didn't want them to become too tight too soon. Jessie made does say in her pattern that this is a project that is quite loose at the bicep and then quite tight at the arm. And she gives you like advice on how to change that if you don't want that. Uh, but I know some people have been caught out by how tight the arms are. But I, I like it on me. Um, and then yeah, now I've, I, I finished that, which was fine because... It was just following the pattern really. There was not as many modifications to do as I had to do for like the body. Uh, if you don't remember, I cast this on like under the ribbing and I did, I cast on for a size smaller. Then I increased immediately and then did the raglans and I picked up and did the neck afterwards to give more stability to the neckline as opposed to the original pattern, which has you 
cast on with a tubular cast on which really stretches out whereas my one sits really nicely like here like a crew neck as opposed to like a boat neck so yeah i'm really happy with my neckline and then i also modified the raglans ever so slightly to give me a little extra room so i had like a couple more stitch stitches to the stitch count because of my gauge being off so basically i did a lot of modifications for this sweater but that was made easy with the very detailed schematics and measurements and numbers that the pattern provides so kudos to jessie made for that however i will say i'm not a fan of jessie made's writing style where she really uses a lot of words for things that i feel can be more concise like i don't know when i read her paragraph sometimes i just get lost like i just stop reading and i have to realize that i'm not actually reading and i have to like force myself to go back and read the words which i don't have with other patterns so I personally am not a good match for that type of pattern, but I really like her staple patterns and fit guidance and advice and tips and modification tips and everything. I just don't enjoy reading the pattern, but that's fine. And then I'm doing some body decreases because I want to see how that looks and if I like it. And also because I'm running low on yarn and if I can lose a few stitches on either side, that's a good benefit too. I'm doing helical knitting by alternating the two skeins and I hope you can see that this is really paying off because there's no pulling whatsoever. The orange speckles are so nicely distributed all over. Same on the sleeves, like there's no pulling at all and I love how even and smooth everything looks. My tension is not the best with this yarn, probably because of the issue that I talked to you about with the stitches being very slippery and the gauge is quite loose as well. I'm doing it on 325 and the pattern even calls for 3.5, but I thought there's no way I'm doing a fingering weight on 3.5, like it'll be way too open. So yeah, I wish that my stitches were neater and if I made this pattern again, I probably would use a different wool that was maybe a bit more neat than this, than this alpaca. I think maybe it's alpaca which has a tendency to be less round and plump than merino. I, I might be wrong. But yeah, I've really been enjoying this project. It was a bit of a headache to try and figure out all the fit modifications that I had to do because of my gauge and like stitch counts and all the math. But once I had done that, the actual knitting is a joy. I like doing the lifted increases for the raglan. I like doing all the sleeve decreases to really taper and shape it. And... I can't wait to wear this on my skin because it's incredibly soft. Because I'm doing the helical knitting, I, I, I'm always working from two balls of yarn. They're on my desk and then I'm knitting here. And every other round I have to go and untwist the skines because they have a tendency to, to twist when you're doing helical knitting because you, do, you don't want them to twist. And um, so I find that I'm always stuck at my desk when I have to knit on this project, which is also why it's not as portable as other things. It's not like the TV living room knitting. And yeah, so it's a bit of a hassle to do helical knitting, but I think it's really, really worth it. And with a fingering weight sweater that would require months of work, I didn't want to take any chances and get a final project that I wasn't happy with if it was something that I could have put a bit more effort towards from the start, especially when it's expensive hand dyed as well. So I'm really looking forward to finishing that. And I loved working with the alpaca silk cashmere I think I want to make a t-shirt with that. The Cozy Classic is going to be quite fitted, so I think I want to make an oversized alpaca silk cashmere t-shirt for this summer, for next summer I guess, maybe in a DK as opposed to fingering, um, although I think I have plans actually to make a fingering. So yeah, actually stay tuned for a fingering weight t-shirt next summer. Okay, the next project, and I think the last, which is good because I'm running out of steam, is something else that you've seen a swatch of in the last episode. And this is the Season Sweater by Ozetta. And I'll show you the yarn I'm using first. I'm using Pigment and Ply Surrey Alpaca in this gorgeous colorway. It's called the Triumph of Time. Look at that blue and that pink. It's so pretty. And I'm holding this with the Rerum Natura in Gilead in the color Quartz. Because I thought that that would be a good match of a base for the kind of underlying tones of this. And they would kind of show then the blue and the pink as what's standing out from this. 
And this is obviously an expensive combination because Gilead is not the cheapest and this is hand dyed yarn, obviously. So I picked a pattern that would not have too much yardage. So in the end, I bought three balls of this and four balls of that to really make sure I wouldn't have to use too much yarn and therefore keep my costs to a minimum and still have a piece that I was happy with. And the patterns I picked was the season sweater because it really is surprising, but yeah, it doesn't use much yarn at all, which I was doubtful at first, but so far so good, not looking like I'm gonna run out of yarn at all. And again, I have heard bad things about how this project is slow growing because of the half fisherman's rib, but I read a trick on a Ravelry project page which said that you could knit the sweater inside out because Ozetta has you do a knit one below, purl one, knit one below, purl one, all over, and then a purl round, and you keep on doing those two like rounds repeated, which has a lot of purling, therefore, 75%. But if you do it inside out, then you have one round of knitting every other time, and then you have a purl one below, knit one, purl one below, knit one. So I thought that that looked more attractive to me, definitely. And so far, so good. Again, that has worked out. So I'll show you the progress on that. And you might be able to tell that this is almost at the exact same point as my Alder sweater test knit. Uh, I showed it on my Instagram where I was a bit annoyed at myself for being at the exact same point at two sweaters at the same time. So ta-da! It's looking very square because of the, the sleeves. Uh, the yarn is quite like thick, it's a worsted. So here it is. I'll show you a closer look. You can hopefully see the variation in the hand dyed yarn. You've got some blue, some pink and some yellow. I think it's really beautiful. It's like very dreamy. And I've picked up and done the neck and I'm, I love this so much. This is what it's going to look like. So with the half fisherman's rib side out like that, but I am knitting it inside out. So um, I just wanted to mention that you're doing your make one right and make one left for the raglan increases. And this is the only part of this sweater where I realized that my inside out trick had worked against me because some of them that you had to do with the short rows, you had to do those increases on the wrong side, which was the right side for me. And then some of them ended up being mirrored because of that. Like long story short, I did some of my make ones the wrong way, but you really can't tell. Like, and, that's, and that was only at the short row section area, not um, for all the other raglan increases. So I'll show you a close-up of the front raglan and I don't think you'll even be able to tell. That's the raglan line in the middle. But I have checked and you can tell that some of them are coming from the left and some of them are coming from the right, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't bother me. And I'm so proud of myself for doing this like trick of doing it inside out and it's worked out. I then went afterwards and picked up and did the neck. And my modification is that I did twisted rib, which is so stunning. And normally the original pattern has you do normal ribbing and it also has you like start off with that and then do the rest of the sweater. But because I was doing it inside out and also to add more stability at the neckline once again, I just cast on after the neck and then picked up and did the neck afterwards which I really don't see a reason why not do that for any pattern. Um, it really doesn't, it's not hard and I think it's all benefits, no loss. Um, the next thing to do then is to pick up for the sleeves, which I am a little worried about how to do that inside out, but I'll figure it out. I've just run out of a ball of um, quartz, but I still have this to go. This is my first, this is all using one kind of hand dyed, by the way. So I've got this of hand dyed left, I've got this entire thing and I've got one more ball skined up. So I'm not going to run out of that. That's insane. And again, I wish I was working on this project more because I love it, but I have to do my test knit. So I'm shelving it for now. And this is what the wrong side looks like, which is actually what I'm seeing when I'm knitting. And it's really nice. I quite like fisherman's rib. Well, I really, really like fisherman's rib. But yeah, I hope that you like this project as much as I do. I'm obsessed with it. I cannot wait to wear this over like winter. It's such a wintry, whimsical color. It's so squishy, so soft. I love Surrey. 
I wish more brands would sell Surrey and that I didn't just have to rely on hand dyers to get it. My, o my only other problem with this sweater is that there's like a couple of points where I've accidentally only picked up one of the two strands that I'm holding. And so I'll show you what that looks like. Here you can see the Surrey strand. That bothers me. So don't know what I'll do about that. It happened at two different points, which is annoying, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and then hide it at the back and then retie it into a knot and then weave those ends. I don't know if that's madness, so let me know if I'm just about to make the worst mistake ever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to unravel it or ladder down because it's so uh, far back in time. So let me know if you have any other trips to hide. I could maybe do duplicate stitch with another strand. I don't know. Let me know. But it, it does bother me, so I want to do something about it. Okay, I think that's it for all my projects. Um, I'm really sorry for saying it again, but I, I really do feel like this was messy and all over the place. But maybe I'm hypercritical of how this was. I, I do feel like at the end of filming, I always get very self-conscious about whether I was messy and forgot to say things, blah, blah, blah. Then I feel a bit down afterwards. And then when I'm editing the podcast, I realize that it was completely fine. And I'm like, oh, like, that was great. Like, don't worry. So maybe right now I have like bad colored glasses. And I think that I was messy, but then I wasn't. Um, but yeah, no, I'm happy that I did this. I really wanted to update you on all the projects I've been doing. I'm a little not stressed out at the moment, just a little all over the place because I've made my autumn plans videos and you guys have been so excited about my projects and really complimenting of like my list and yarns and it got me so motivated to do those autumn projects and I really want to do them and I can see that time is passing and we're already two weeks into September and I've only done one of those projects and I've not casted on any of those sweaters but I'm telling myself that I really can't cast on any new sweater while I still have the test net first of all and then I really would like to finish the two sweaters I have on the go but then I think what would make me happy is to cast on a new autumn sweater. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to finish my test knit and then immediately after that, just cast on like my new autumn projects. And then so maybe this project will have to be like on hold for a bit because I really, really want to cast on my autumn plans. Um, I wish I had cleared off my summer needles sooner. Although those aren't summer knits, they're sweaters. But I wish I had made my autumn plans after like the timing is just clashing a little bit but i'll quickly show you my acquisitions because i went to like the yarn festival and then i'll let you go um i shared a photo on my instagram but obviously not everybody follows me there first acquisition is this gorgeous tote bag i forgot the name of the seller but i'll put it on screen it's got all the british breeds and it's so pretty. On Instagram, if you if you look, everybody got like either a tote bag or they had wall prints, which would have been amazing as well. But I thought I would make I would have more use of a tote bag, especially for storing yarn. <laughs> so I'm really happy with that one. And then I got um, three projects worth, which I'm so happy because I had planned all of that before going. I went, I got my plans, I literally stuck to my exact budget, and then I left and I didn't get tempted by any extras and hand dyed and everything. I got all natural wools undyed because I know I can always get hand dyed online, whereas the natural wools are a bit harder to gauge and like get a feel for. And I was able to squish all that yarn and see how it felt on my skin right there and then. So the first project will be uh, the November Balaclava by Petit Knit and I'm gonna make this in this Lime Mirror Wool Simply Shetland DK. Only one skein will be enough for the whole balaclava and I'll be holding this with a strand of Alpaca 1 by Isiger in 4S. I'm a little worried that this is warm and this is cold toned, so I'll swatch, or I'll start the project, I'll cast on the project and if this doesn't work out with that grey, I'll find another second strand to hold this with and we'll just see. But this could be an interesting marl, or it could be completely wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm not super sure. I bought this online, um, thinking it'd be a good match, but I might be wrong. I think Filkalana Alva has a few more shades of 
gray that are kind of like that. Maybe the shade Pebble or something could be good. So yeah, this might be a fail of a match, but this is what the project is supposed to be. Then the next project I want to make is the the Moonset Pullover, no, the Moonset Slipover by Ozetta, which is funny because I had bought wool for that at the latest edition of like the wool producer showcase back in March, but then I ended up using that yarn for something else. The project was back in the queue with no yarn allocated to it, but then now I got some yarn for it. So this is exactly the color I had envisioned for it. Uh, my first iteration was a bit lighter, but I'm glad I went back for a darker color. This is a sport weight, I believe, where it's 300 meters per 100 gram, uh, even though it's sold as a DK, but it's very, very plump, like it really fills up. And it's from Hawkshaw Sheep, which is also the people I had bought the first like batch of yarn from to make this project. So basically, I really want to make the moonset slip over, and I really want to make it in Hawkshaw Sheep. So this is the color that I'm going to use and I'm really excited to make that, but it probably won't be for a while because I'm making all my autumn plants first. This might be a winter slipover, who knows. And then lastly, uh, very excitingly, Eva from the Scottish Festival of Yarn has launched her very own yarn. So this is the Scottish Yarn Festival yarn and she had a four ply and a DK and I got the four ply. This is the color Baird. And it's this really nice kind of grayish. It looks more beige on camera, but it's a little bit more gray here in person. And yeah, it had they had a lot of nice colors. And I went for an, a neutral one. And I'm going to make the Peric Vest by Erlan Zuch. And it's 80% Shetland, 20% Cheviot, 350 meters. So a bit of a heavier four ply. And it's really nice and soft and squishy very like natural feeling like it just makes me feel at one with nature as opposed to like superwash merino which i'm sure a lot of you can relate like if you like woolly wools you know why you like them right it's because they feel so natural uh yeah as you can see like it's it's so plump and just like so squishy so this is my scottish wool from that festival last week if you saw me and said hi then hello again it was really nice meeting you um i spent the day with friends um talking to people vendors and it was a very overwhelming day like it was insane how busy it was but it, it ran really smoothly i'm so happy i went i'm already so looking forward to the next one eva has announced the date of the wool producer showcase which will happen again in march this year or next year I guess and I'll be going to that for sure so yeah book the date if you're in the area don't miss it it's a must see if you like Scottish wool but yeah that's it for my acquisitions I actually did replace um, a yarn that I talked about so I'll show you here I had bought this like orange rusty wool for an office sweater and I've um, basically destashed and sold that to a friend and I rebought the exact same quantity in this blue color to make the office sweater and I feel happy with that decision I was already feeling quite lukewarm about it where I was like trying to convince myself that no no the orange is fine go with the orange you didn't buy that that long ago like trust your gut but then it's like well if I trust my gut I actually don't like this orange color and I don't think it'll look good on me and blue always looks good on me so I'll, I want to get the blue so I did so thank you for encouraging me to do that and for uh, giving me advice on whether to pick the dark blue or the light blue on Instagram. The plans for the future, like I said, I'm going to very quickly swatch for the Lakes Pullover by Ozetta. If you want to do a knit along of the Lakes Pullover, very low-key knit along, like just in a group chat, message me on Instagram. Like, don't just comment below here. Message me on Instagram for the Lakes Pullover and I'll create a group chat for that. And same for the Lana Vest by... Um, Irene Lynn, if you want to be added to a group chat for that, let me know, and I'm going to swatch for it really soon. Also, there's going to be a knit night to celebrate the 5,000 subscribers, but um, I'll give the details of that in a future episode, and I'll also put a link to sign up for it. I'll do it differently this time, so you won't have to DM me for a link. I'll um, put that all in a Google form, just trying, trying new things out. Um, it, it's quite tricky sometimes to find the right balance of like just how to organize things and 
I'm not perfect and I'm gonna make mistakes and have to refine my way of doing things. I find it really stressful to organize things because I don't want to do it wrong, especially when I have an audience, because if I do something wrong, people will see it and catch it and maybe tell me, um, and sometimes maybe not in the nicest way, which is scary, but I don't want to let that fear stop me from organizing things, which is why I really want to do another knit night and to do knit alongs in the future. It's just a bit scary sometimes to uh, go out of the comfort zone. Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope it wasn't too long for you. I know that you have said it doesn't bother you when they're too long, so uh, I'm not too, too worried. But I hope that you got inspired by the projects or that you got some progress done on whatever you were knitting on. I really will make sure to film again in two weeks time to update you on those projects. Really, really hope to have done a lot of progress on my test net. Maybe have a sleeve done by then, at least. That would be good. Have finished the socks for Sari's knit along and hopefully we'll have then swatched and cast on one or two autumn projects by then. Uh, I guess there wasn't really that many new projects today compared to the last podcast. But yeah, hope you're doing well wherever you are and that you're looking forward to autumn or the other season that you're having if you're in the southern hemisphere. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, sometimes it can surprise you that you're not subscribed to a channel even though you watch all of their videos. That definitely happens to me. And if you like the video, also don't hesitate to leave a like on it or comment to let me know. That also lets me know that you like the content that I produce or that you want to see more of my projects or ideas. And it always makes me feel appreciated. So yeah, like and subscribe and comment, even though it sounds so cliche every time you say it. Um, it, it does feel meaningful when you do it. So yeah, thank you so much if you do those kind of things. I really like seeing the same names come up all the times in the comments. If you're one of the, if you're one of the people who comments every time on the videos, I see you and I appreciate you so much. So thank you so much for supporting me. And like I said, have a happy rest of the week, happy knitting and see you soon. Bye.